Aryan was telling us that we should ask him anything and everything, whatever we want. <laughs> so obviously we have to ask him the important question. You want to ask him? What's, important What's your name? favorite question, bro? <laughs> no, bro. House of Horrors in Kolkata. I don't know if you've heard about yeah, this. Yeah, watch Burari. No, no, no. Oh. Kolkata, oh. not Delhi. Oh, in Kolkata. The OG one. House of Horrors. There was another House of Horrors. Yeah, there was another House <laughs> of Horrors. Kind of scarier Part than one. Burari, if I'm honest. Scarier asked. than Burari. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to This Is Not A Podcast. We have uh, two incredibly cool people here. I'm going to try out his name. His name is Aryan. Nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Okay. And Aishwarya. Yes. They have a really cool podcast. I'm sure a lot of you know called the Desi Crime Podcast. Which is actually a podcast. It <laughs> is. A podcast. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not dissing us, man. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we just started, bro. But it's a show, not a podcast. Yeah, okay, 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 fine. Yeah. Sure. We'd like it to end with you guys making out. Fan <laughs> <laughs> <Translation>. fiction. <laughs> yeah. So, um, hi guys. How how are you feeling? How does it how does it feel to be on a podcast which is not a podcast very good very excited very yeah what is not a, why not Say a podcast some, why not a, so i have this thing called this is not a vlog which is actually a vlog oh. okay but like i i call it this is not a vlog so yeah. then when we decided to start a podcast with my friends yeah i was first like name and it was like this is not a podcast i mean yeah. the answer begets a question then why not why this is not a vlog if it was a vlog yeah yeah i mean why don't ask me it's so like many questions <laughs> it's my <laughs> job yeah, yeah. It's not <laughs> it's not so welcome to the this <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast that's also <laughs> name <laughs> So, uh, how did you guys start? Like, let's get into the crux. Hmm. How did you guys start the Desi Crime podcast? Because, like, we have seen a lot of podcasts uh, which is related to crime, mm -hmm. but something good coming out of India yeah. is just you guys. So, good yeah. coming. Out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with crime, with crime. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of exactly what the rationale was. So, we were in college in the US together, and I've been a huge crime fanatic my entire life, pestering Aryan to listen to, you know, some of my favorite ever true crime episodes yeah. because the US had seen this huge podcast boom with podcasts like Serial and Crime Junkie completely blowing up all over the world. Also, when she sh says fanatic, like she sleeps to true crime podcasts. Yeah, sleeps so to true crime podcasts. Right, right. How does that help? It, it doesn't. I'm a serial nightmare dreamer um, and it's probably not good for me, but I don't think I can help it at this point. But, but at that point of time, did you only listen to podcasts or were you watch, also watching shows? No, and watching shows and all, but podcasts were the new sort of hot medium back mm, okay. in the day because they had blown up in the US the way they had. And to me, they were a better medium mm. than watching. I've never been a huge YouTube consumer or anything. She could listen to it anywhere in class. She's just fucking listening Precisely, to it. <laughs> precisely. And I like letting my imagination run and creating the visuals on its own without having yeah, to see it. Right. Um, so anyway, yeah, so pestering Aran to listen to some of my favorite episodes and when he does listen to it, his first question to me is why don't you listen to any Desi True Crime podcasts? Okay. And we had kind of this split second moment where we realized because there are none. Hmm. Um, shortly after that COVID hit, college shut down, we were back at home. So it was a coming together of supply demand in yeah. the Indian market, being good storytellers. And then, Free market capitalism, baby. Yeah, That's what I was about. That's a lot of big words. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't into like true crime stuff? Not oh, as a consumer, no. Uh, I still don't consume true crime, but I love you storytelling. Just don't get high on it. You're the OG content just, just Imagine, bro, yeah, all the crimes are done. <laughs> they have no more episodes to release. <laughs> Gotta start They're your own. the content. Yeah. literal content creators, yeah. So how did she convince you to get in? Like, I, I mean, I do like, yeah, I mean, she didn't, con it was a mutual coming together. I do like storytelling a lot. And both of us have been writers and auditors throughout oh, high right. school. We were like the... Uh, uh, annoying uh, debating types. debating kids and <laughs> debate team. Yeah, debate <laughs> team. Yeah, debate team. Yeah. M U N T. Yeah. So I think it was just a natural coming together of uh, a need and the a creative appetite uh, that was um, awaiting to be fulfilled, as well as our natural skills. And man, it came together and it led to basic prime, I guess. Yes. Do you guys like how how does how does the research work for like an episode? Like how does it like like I watched. A lot of your episodes. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, oh, I it, for for research, I was also watching the episode you guys did with having said that, mm -hmm. and then I was just I was trying to research, and then I watched the Praveen Vergi's yeah. story, and I got into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I'm in the rabbit hole now. <laughs> okay, so, for some context, you guys pick a story on your podcast and you dissect. It. You narrate it. We narrate it as a story. It's scripted. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. So unlike podcasts that, the, especially in India, there's a 
uh, stereotypical understanding of podcast because podcasts have blown up in the last year and a half, right. yeah. and it's usually two blokes talking about how to make your biceps bigger, right? I mean that's ice buds. Yeah, ice buds. Oh. We talk about that sometimes. Beer biceps, okay. Okay. What? Oh, you don't know about beer biceps. Huh? <laughs> beer biceps. <laughs> huh? What? Who? Uh, no, I mean, no, no, I love him. He's great. He's a great guy. No, but. Um, yeah, so that's the understanding, and you know, funnily enough, when, you, when in India you tell somebody I have a podcast, it's like, oh, interview. I've, who do you talk to? What do you talk? Who do you talk about? Right. You know, stuff Ooh. like that. Whereas in the West, crime is the biggest podcast on an average oh, podcast. It's the biggest. The biggest. Um, doesn't even like crime junkies in these don't come close to, or rather, the Rogan type don't come close to where crime junkies is. Oh, wow. um, they make millions of dollars a month. Um, in just Patreon sales. For just example. Patreon sales. It's insane. Not even yeah. the ads they charge. So anyway. Uh, in India, the boom was interview podcasts, right. not narrative podcasts. Um, but I think we've been able to carve sort of a niche for ourselves in that blow up. Um, but uh, as for research, I think, Kishwara, how do we go about researching? I think uh, when we initially started the podcast, it was a lot of cases we had personally known of, cases let's say our parents grew up with, cases we'd seen movies on that we were curious about, that kind of thing. And the research process involved a lot of just uh, secondary material, so a lot of prominent newspapers, yeah. uh, interviews with victim family members available on news channels, YouTube, that kind of thing. But as the podcast grew more and more, we had the ability to reach out to primary sources. Mm -hmm. So for many episodes, we've reached out to, let's say, victim family members, or we've reached out to professors who've conducted research on the topic, like yeah. the Nepalese royal family case, we reached out to a London-based professor who did like a whole thesis on it. Um, so as in when the podcast became bigger, and sort of the reach increased as well the number of sources, the kind of sources we could use to be able to conduct our research changed. Um, now research takes about, I think, longer than the writing phase of the podcast does. For sure. So research, I would say, takes 15 to 20 hours easily of continuous research. And then over a week spread after each research is done, we'll divide up the writing. And yeah. That's what it takes. But when you say you like, you reach out to like the family of the victims, like, mm -hmm. yeah. how does that, like, what is the... The way of doing yeah, the mechanism. How does that work? Right? We'll find them sometimes on Twitter. Sometimes when we look up their name, their job, sort of official email IDs will show up. Sometimes uh, uh, victim family members have written books. And so we have connections uh, through our, our own podcast with the publishing house. So reaching out to yeah. the publishing house for contact details to the author's Facebook messages, like just emails, like to the professor, it was just like an email. Hmm. So stuff like that. Are they usually willing to like talk about it, the family members? I think you need to be cognizant about uh, which case you reach out the victims for. Uh, mm. We are very aware of uh, not covering cases that haven't been investigated fully, or at least don't have a lot of resources available. Right. Those are still uh, very raw in yeah. the victim yeah. family's hearts. And it's, you're, you're then doing it for the clicks more than anything because everybody's talking about it. So let me just put out a 20 minute piece, mm. uh, having read one article. We don't do that. Um, so usually if we pick a case, say from the 2000s, it's been enough time for the family to process it to some degree. Yeah. And they have talked about it. Uh, and so we make that sort of intuitive calculation of, okay, we can reach out to them and um, yeah, like it recently happened, there was a very uh, beautiful moment happened a week ago where we covered the Upar cinema fire, which was a very tragic fire that killed 59, 59 uh, people, yeah. in Delhi uh, at the Was Upar this cinema. an accidental fire? Hmm? It, was it was an, an accidental, accidental fire, fire, but... Lots of human negligence involved. A lot of human negligence, right? Which year was this? 19, uh, 1998, 1997. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. And um, so it's been a while, that's one criteria. But uh, there's a movie on uh, there's a show on Netflix, uh, Trial, Trial by, by Fire, Fire yeah. that was made yeah. on it as well, based on the book of one of the mothers of the victim. So the two kids had died in that tragic fire, and the both her kids, both both their kids. Oh, um, both the kids. yeah, what was so eighteen year old daughter and like I think oh. thirteen year old son. Son, died. yeah, and Mrs. Miss Krishnamurthy, uh, the mother, she had written a book along with the husband. Now we tried reaching out to them, funnily enough, for the research bit of it. Penguin, Penguin didn't connect us. There was a you know bit of a communication mismatch, and we have short turnover time, so we are not making documentaries for Netflix. Where we have six months, yeah. you know, we have week on week release times. So anyway, we couldn't reach out to her. This episode gutted us. Uh, I mean, Ash cried on the episode, which has never happened before. So for this episode, we even went to the Upar Cinema in Delhi, which is now dilapidated, burned down. Yeah. Very, very emotional episode for us. And a week ago, uh, Miss Krishnamurti emailed us asking yeah. us to call her up. 
and so we were a little scared. I'm scared, scared after the episode. After, after the, the episode, episode went yeah. Up and and I see the email. Well. I'm terrified. I'm like, okay, I think I did everything right. Like I gave their book credit. Yeah. I was respectful enough. I don't know what I could have done yeah. wrong. Let's hope it's good. Yeah. And, and then, yeah. yeah, and on the call, she praised it. You know, she praised the portrayal of uh, the case, her kids, her story. Said she's usually apprehensive of media covering it because they sensationalize it, which is endemic to crime coverage in India. And um, this was moving, and she really appreciates it, and felt like she needed to call us for that. And dude, oh my God, that validation! Yeah. Fuck man, it was so yeah. meant so much. So uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, sort of I don't know. I took a tangent, but uh, no, to no. brag about Long this. Answer, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my heart stopped when you said that phone call came. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You both spoke to her, or like yeah, we I was like, like speaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, so on a week, so you guys release episodes on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yes. So, uh, like, you are done with an episode and then you start working on the next one like that, or like you have Not a backlog. Or? That's how it used to be when we just had an audio podcast. But now that we're in different cities in general and we have other work, uh, and YouTube in general has long over, longer edit times. Now it's uh, we meet, let's say three days in a month, and we record three to four episodes a day. Hmm. Oh, nice. And then we have content for let's say two months, and in those two months, then we're writing more. So we'll have another yeah. three scripts each ready. So you both are doing the research at the same time, or like you, one person does research, one person is writing, or like how does it? So we uh, don't. I mean, this started off as a logistical thing where Same. we don't know each other's cases. She handles the research and writing of a case end to end, and I'm oblivious to what she has. One of you guys are working on the same thing, huh? <laughs> There's I mean, enough crime cases. They're, they're, <laughs> that's the perhaps the only division we do. I mean, sometimes she's picked up a case that I had on my list, and she tells me, "Or Aran, I'm doing it," and I get oh, mad at okay. her. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. she'll just give me the warning of which case. But then the rule is that you don't read it. You don't read about it. And she has a horrible, horrible habit. If I tell her I'm covering this case. She just wants to like click open an article <laughs> and find the out. Story. And I like, can't help it. It's happened so many times. It's so annoying now that I make I make a pinky promise. Just, literally, <laughs> if I have like a very cool case, because um, she's I a drive crime drive sleuth. West. But um, we research and write our own cases. It started as a logistical thing because you know, especially in writing, too many cooks spoil the recipe and, and or the dish. We're different writers. We're different writers. So imagine coordinating one script, the disagreements, and God knows what all will take too much time. Like you write yours, I'll write mine. Now, what that has ended up doing for our listeners is, say she has written the case and she's narrating it, and I'm coming in completely blank and asking her questions uh, about the case. I'm like a vicarious listener for the audience. So the host that doesn't know, the co-host technically who doesn't know about the case, serves uh, the, as a sort of uh, the audience can vicariously experience. Uh, asking questions via me, right? Because I'll ask all the questions they're having. Because just yeah. like them, I'm just with the case for the first time. So that's how we divide it up. Now, when you work on these scripts, uh, it's it's based on a true story, right? Yes. You guys uh, like take the, take different paths or deviations for creative freedom, or how close to the original story do you guys go through? Oh no, completely to close. Uh, we stick fundamentally to the facts. There's some creative liberty in saying. It was a beautiful sunny morning. <laughs> family. Maybe it was raining. Maybe it was raining. Maybe it was raining. You know, sue me. Yeah. Um, and the family woke I up. I hate comments. <laughs> exactly. Fuck you. I checked the weather app. <laughs> Precisely. Fucking Indra is commenting. <laughs> hey, dude. Um, but yeah, creative liberty only to sort of set a scene yeah. and really transport the listener into what the day may have been like, what the emotions were like, um, that kind of thing. But other yeah. than that, no. But. Um, uh, well, have you guys done? I mean, I, I know you. Have, I know you guys have done the Sneha Philip case. Yeah. yeah. Where like, there's no real conclusion. Hmm. Right? Yeah, I love those cases. Those are the ones which are painful to watch. Yeah. You never know. Like, no I watched your entire yeah. episode, by the way. The entire yeah. episode that okay. I went on Reddit, I went, I watched yeah. everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, maybe there is some information. Yeah. No. So like he's waiting on the part two. Like yeah. Do you I wish say there the truth? was. Like, it drives me crazy. I wish there I was. I think as long as you preface it as speculation, mm-hmm. uh, which we do sometimes, or theories. These are theories. That's what we do. We can we speculate. Yeah. Um, but you know we don't state it as the biblical fact. We're like you know. I have no idea what this kid because I tend to stay away from true crime stuff because that yeah, freaks bro. me out, man. Yeah. Mm. Like. <laughs> What no kind of content do you it. consume for like? Are you seek adrenaline? No, no, just in uh, terms of like. No, 
I movies, TV shows, the usual stuff. Okay, but, but not sh- not crime. Yeah, I hate crime. Okay, like, I tend to avoid it. Horror? No, I tend okay. to avoid that. Okay. I used to watch a lot of true crime, but then it started like freaking me out. Uh-huh. Like I, I, there's this one documentary on Netflix. Uh, I think it's his the serial killer name. Uh, his name is uh, Ramirez. Okay. I okay. Uh, you know, I have seen. It's been on my feed. I'm not. Yeah, seen. really good looking guy. Okay. Uh, They're always good looking, bro. Yeah, He's called the uh, the Night Stalker. Okay. Okay. I, I've Sounds seen like that. A yeah, yeah, yeah. Room, bro, hmm. but that show was so creepy. So I used to have. I used to have a, so I live in, in an apartment, okay? okay, but I used to have one of the windows which you could open from outside because it's not locked. That's like the next scary. day I wanted to like fucking lock it because <laughs> I'm like, anything can yeah. happen. And I'm a sort of person who should, I, I don't lock doors when I'm in the washroom. Yeah. Mm. I don't lock doors when I'm sleeping, nothing. Uh-huh. But now I lock all doors because <laughs> I can't trust anyone. It could be yeah, my no. dad killing me, dude. <laughs> like I've watched enough shows to know that my dad could be pissed off with me and could kill me. No, no I think <laughs> good looking guys are on the prowl for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I used to watch a lot and then I just stopped because like, after a while, it just gets into your head. Like it does. I couldn't, if I lived alone, I probably couldn't listen to True Crime the way that now, I did. Now, if something fucking happens to you, they're going to clip this episode. <laughs> and they're going to do well. Do well. <laughs> you know, the series disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> you interview me. Yeah, I always hated that guy. <laughs> no, but I feel like you stop trusting anyone. Like, you, if you're in an Uber alone and you're in a, you know, an isolated area, you... Like, oh, no, and that gets me. I think with or without a True Crime podcast, being from Delhi. <laughs> no, but and as it has, being from Delhi. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Very Uber. I fake a call. I'll fake a call and like talk about something. Some like I'll make it seem like I'm somebody. Oh, you know, army book. Like yeah. 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 Lawyers. I start going, "Huh, to high court ka case ho yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say something like that. I feel better about. To the family, cab driver doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> I, I try whatever I can. But has it has a negative effect on you guys since you're not like mentally, me mentally. and you're re- researching, putting hours into yeah. this. I think some episodes more than others, mm. every episode where we've realized the closer we get to any individual victim's story, the more of an impact it seems mm. to have. So for example, in the Uphar case, we were quite literally reading of the lives of two children from the account of their mother. And so that's very, very intimate information very intimate. to the victim. So that is incredibly gut-wrenching. For Aryan, Aryan, do you want to talk about Kohistan? I think, yeah, Kohistan was this case where five yeah. women were, were honor killed in the northern Pakhtunkhwa region of Pakistan. And again, I've covered honor killings before, but if I like really invest myself in the research, I start identifying with the victims and I start yeah. identifying with their stories. They no longer become numbers. Yeah, they're yeah, not numbers exactly. anymore. Yeah. They're not even strangers. They're not characters. They're people. Them, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know you. Like, buddy. Okay. So, um, that story really shook me. But I think after covering what, 110 cases on our show, there is some, like, a healthy distance we are able to create with the yeah. stories. It gets uh, better. Yeah, it gets better. Um, but I, I think from the get-go, our temperament was pretty solid, which is why we were able to do it in the first place. Right. Um, but yeah. What's your favorite case? Like something which is like really intriguing and like your go-to murder, bro. Go-to your go-to murder. <laughs> murder. <laughs> Top three murders. <laughs> um, Sneha Philip for me is one that I okay, think. Okay, I have about no idea about this case. You got Dude, Sneha Philip. Yeah. 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 Is Sneha Philip like the victim? Or bro, bro, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, or, or not. Or not. Or not. Or not. See, the thing is, I'm obsessed with 9-11, okay? I'm obsessed. Me I'm too. Obsessed with 9-11. Me too. Yeah. 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 I, I what, watched one, guys. My birthday is on September 11th, 2001. Yeah. Same day. Same day. Yeah. Same day. That's okay. crazy. <laughs> well, get triple checked when I go to the US. Are you Sneha Philip? Connected. She's right yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Go on, go on. So, so I'm obsessed with 9/11. I watched every possible doc, everything on the internet, every angle, uh-huh. everything. Okay. And then wait, wait, the last wait. thing I f- like. F- Fall on is your podcast. Yeah. I watch. They have this person like didn't exist for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm obsessed with this person. I keep like. Okay, me how is Sneha Philip? Bro, once in a while, I think what is Sneha Philip doing? Is she alive? Is she not? Is she dead? Is she? Who is Sneha Philip? Before, before okay. you just say Philip, one question: Since he is such a uh, fanatic of 9/11, mm-hmm. she's also hot. Who did? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, well, it's very uh, pretty. And she is quite involved in the you know, <laughs> kinky circles. If you get into that, but do you, who did it? Who did 9/11 according to you? Who did 9/11? Yeah, like you, you know the whole Bush you, did 9/11. Yeah, yeah, and there are many theories. No, 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 no
Okay. I've I've done too much research in Osama. I have to give him the credit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that I feel is like his he life. has a different opinion. I know he does for sure. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, but I, I feel know. like he has, that's his life's work. He's the man did uh, all magnum yeah. opus. Yeah, yeah. really. Oh yeah. my yeah. god. Yeah. So I feel like that's. I see stones. I feel like that's his pinnacle. I can't take that away from him. So that's his. 9/11 is Osama's. We're really, we're really talking about these guys like the sports people. Yeah, yeah. Ronaldo, Champions League, Twenty Six. Well, what do you think? Like, no, I don't know enough about nine. I'm curious because friends of mine have been. No, he definitely knows. He asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't. But like, I've lived in New York, and so people in New York have theories. Like people. Wait, what are they, some of the theories? Bush, there? Bush is one of the biggest yeah, ones. Israelis. I mean, you do. There'll be. No, there was something things. like uh, the building. The owner of the building wanted insurance, so he had bombs placed there. So <laughs> well, that's the least problem. Yeah, yeah no, but these are all part of like documentaries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there were bombs under the building that detonated. I've watched thing. videos on like the mechanics of how the way the plane went in. It shouldn't have technically. The Jet building shouldn't have fallen. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Oh, you seem to know your thing. I was born there. I was born on the day. But what's the Sneha Philip case? Sneha Philip, right? So Sneha Philip is. She was born in India in uh, Kerala, and when she was very young, about shout three or four out. years old, shout <laughs> out to her. Um, where are we going? Shout out Kerala. <laughs> I don't know if I can shout out again. <laughs> Uh, born in Kerala, moved to the US when she was very, very young, like three years old, and um, grew up in around the New York area. Went to medical school. Incredible life, like incredibly intelligent woman. Went to medical school in Chicago. Fell in love with a man there. The two of them got married, graduated at the same time. Yeah. Both of them got these incredible jobs in New York. Did you mention she was hot? Um, yeah, Sharon, Sharon, someone, someone, someone mentioned it. Incredibly hot. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> just, just He's also not bad. He looks like John Abraham with like long hair. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly specific. Yeah, sometimes there's some look about him. <laughs> looks like a guitarist vibe. Yeah. But um, anyway, living an incredibly happy life. This young married couple in New York with great jobs, and uh, this is 2001, and it's September 10th, 2001, when um, you know the couple wakes up. Ron, her husband, goes to work, and she stays back home because she didn't have work that day for some reason. Has a video call with her mom, leaves home, doesn't return for the night, and this is all to her husband, who's like, you know, she does stay out sometimes. She sleeps over at like her friend's place, cousin's place, whatever, but she usually lets me know that she she's not going to come back home. Um, but anyway, he goes to sleep. He has work early the next morning. She hasn't returned. He makes a mental note of like telling her yeah. that you know, make sure to tell me when you're not coming Don't back. Don't do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, next morning, he wakes up. His wife still hasn't come back home. It's really weird to him, but he needs to get to work like really quickly. And Fahim is born. And Fahim yeah. is born. Exactly. Yeah. That morning, yeah. 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 that morning. Yeah. 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 Ye
minutes before the attack, it seems like a woman who's dressed exactly like Sneha Philip is walking towards the elevator in the apartment. It's glare, like sunny glare into mm -hmm. the camera, so they can't fully make out who this woman is, but she seems to be dressed like their same own height, apartment. Their own mm -hmm. apartment, same height, same stature as Sneha. Seems to be coming back without the bag that she had the day before from her shopping. Yeah. Stands in front of the elevator, calls the elevator, but then like two minutes before the attack, turns around and walks back out without ever getting into the elevator. Yeah. So now there's speculation on who is this woman, was yeah. she Sneha Philip? If it was her, why did she press the button, wait there and then leave? And she left before the attack, before right? So the it wasn't attack, like in response right, to Right, not the in attack. response okay. to the But then people say, what if the timing on the, or the CCTV camera is off? What if she did hear the attack and that's why she went out? Mm -hmm. It's usually like spot on, right? Because yeah, it, it is, but this is how the one calibrated like, though. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, basically all of this, uh, the family and the NYPD have two different theories. The family tried really hard to have her be declared one of the victims of 9-11. They succeeded, but none of her jewelry she used to wear, a lot of gold and gold became the primary means to identify yeah. victims from the site. Yeah. None of her gold was ever found. She's never been officially identified through remains from the building. Um, but there is this online postcard community called Post Secret. It's an anonymous community where people can send in sort of their secrets written out on like handmade postcards. It's read it back in 2001. Exactly. Yeah. And it's still really famous. <laughs> like they have this whole museum of confessions that yeah. people have sent in. And one came in that made people think that it was by Sneha Philip. And it's this postcard which seems like it has like a pencil sketch of the Twin Towers burning on it. And on the top there is text that reads, um, everyone who knew me before 9-11 thinks I'm dead. And now people speculate who the hell is this from. Yeah. Many think this is from her, that she used the attack to escape her life. There, later on, there were reports of like problems in her marriage. She had been fired from her job. She used to be at gay bars, gay bars, bars, which her husband like denies those allegations. So a lot of, of, course, yeah. lot of issues yeah. in the story. Wow. Yeah, that's Neha Philip. No, but I feel like she died. You feel like she died? No, I feel like she died. And the reason oh. that whoever that person never came out is because like, Nobody knew she was a lesbian or like she didn't want to come out and, like if she had gone to like a friend's place, the friend mm. would have automatically called and said, right? Like Exactly. Hey. So why didn't the person come forward who she stayed with the night before? Dude, it's not that because bad. She, didn't, she, didn't want, she wanted it to be a secret. Hmm. She didn't snitch, bro. She didn't snitch. She, I feel like she was... Well, what do you, what think? do you think? That she just disappeared and where went? No, I think uh, that doesn't make sense to me because 2001 New York is still, you know, if, I don't think it's that bad to be gay there. That <laughs> if you if you died and the whole city is looking after you, your no, but they never they come also out. fucked up, right? Because the brother and the husband said she's in she's she, in the she was in the building, yeah, so the NYPD yeah, yeah. were really right. That, that that screwed the investigation. I mean, that skewed the not screwed it. But but dude, I also read on Reddit that she slept with her brother's sister. How do they? But know? the brother says no. That that didn't. Obviously, the brother, the brother says the brother <laughs> and the husband. Sister. I feel like the brother and the husband are sleeping together. The brother's sister. Yeah, what, what brother's you? wife. No, no, brother's. Our brother's wife. Sorry, sorry. Oh, she's yeah. living with her yeah. sister-in-law. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but I feel details. like there should be some truth to it, right? Like people can't be making this shit up. You know, yeah, yeah, people never make shit up. Okay, then what? So you think she's alive? <laughs> Ask no, no, I don't like, know. Do they don't know, bro. They know something here. I don't know. I also don't know. I genuinely I don't, know. don't know what happened to this. Okay, woman, but it, imagine she was alive. How could she just do, like? Okay, like. Okay, because are there, no, like, do people are pre nine eleven to pre nine eleven US was fundamentally pre nine eleven world. Pre nine eleven world, dude. You could walk up to the air like. To the uh, thing that you get into before the security. you know, yeah, through security to the terminal to the gate, you know, like CCTV security was so different, and America is so we forget how big America is in terms of land mass. It's almost twice the size of India, with one fifth the population. Yeah, it's really easy to start a new life in America. Pre nine eleven, pre nine eleven, especially. Now it's much harder, obviously. So, but you know, if, if she were but to... But she started on 9-11, bro. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have CCD cameras the next day, you know. And yes, it took a little time. It took time. What if she caused 9-11? Coming back to our first... Because Osama's wife. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Do you know Sneha? <laughs> Maybe she's watching right yeah. now. <laughs> she was a doctor, gave birth to... Her. Oh, shit. Holy crap. Yeah. But yeah. But you, did you try case. reaching out to the family or something? Like, not, no. No, there, there's contact details of the husband. Uh, he's remarried since. There were those details, but no, no. this was the initial case at the time we wanted. Yeah. Yeah. He's given he's given his new wife a curfew. <laughs> he's a misogynist now. Yeah. You come back at nine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you come back one minute later than nine. I'll show you. Paulin <laughs> put an air tag on. <laughs> 
wherever there is a terrorist attack around the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's also sus that she used to not like. There were times when she used to sleep over at other places. That is she sus. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And she was probably cheating, which is. And also that phone call at night. Yeah, the phone call oh, at phone night. Call. You seem a very controlling boyfriend. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just saying, clip this. Let future prospects if you're not already with somebody. Uh. No, but the phone call at night was weird, bro. He he got a phone call at some two or three or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got a phone call from um, from hi, from her, yeah, right? Yeah, the first night. Yeah. The first night, the night before 9/11, so right. night of the 10th, while he was asleep. But I think later, didn't he realize that the call was from inside the house? So it may have been a mistake. Yeah, but who called him from inside? Yeah, the house? so it was yeah. a call from inside the house. So it's like she came. So did into she the come house. back and call? Like, it was a second what phone, bro. It was a second. But also, phone. they had cats. Like, what if the cat like? ஒரிபிலிட்டி <laughs> 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 I'm just saying no material evidence has been found to connect her, which there are some people to whom there is no material evidence. Mm. But those are also people who were 100% within the buildings. They had jobs in the building. They were certainly inside. Mm. That's not true for her. She had no business being in yeah. in the building That's on crazy. the day of the attacks. Maybe the other woman was in the building. Possible, but in the office spaces. Even better. Hmm. <laughs> the curious theories. I want. I want to. I want to read your confession to post secrets. That <laughs> <laughs> come up. <laughs> yeah, but why? Okay, if that was her, why would she send that letter to whatever the fuck this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't have. All why do people answer. write shit on Reddit? You know, why does an entire you know, community exist there? People like. You know, people they want to tell like their sharing, yeah. stuff, the deep dark thoughts to somebody. Sometimes yeah. it's the rush as well, sharing it. Like the yeah. Zodiac killer used to regularly yeah, yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I think you're seeing from experience, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's the Zodiac killer again? I watched the David Fincher movie, the oh, Zodiac. Oh, the mm. one with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. So good. Killer. He was just a serial killer, bro. They're all the same, bro. They kill a lot of people. They're kind of good-looking, charming with women. Hmm. Hate prostitutes, bad. <laughs> yeah, hate prostitutes. Yeah. yeah. Check the report. Kind of bigoted, yeah. Very virtuous. That <laughs> yeah. Well, what about uh, some of the crimes in India? Like, has there been anything which is Uh, which has caught your eye and been like, this is suspicious, like suspicious. something which doesn't have an ending, something like Sneha Philip, which is like. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. I think, firstly, crimes in India in general tend to be very different from crimes in the West because of the cultural undertone. There's something. There's some cultural explanation, like Vim just said, right? Serial killers, they're all the same, and to some degree, that's true. You can, especially in America, you can attribute it to a few things. You can attribute it to psychopathy. And mix in it, you know, bad childhood experience or right. single know, parent household, yeah, drugs, sexual abuse, kind of thing, yeah. like just a combination of that will 99% of the ch- uh, mo- mo- times give you a fair explanation of why something went down. In India, it's usually far more nuanced and complex because of social issues. So things like honor killings. Now, what explains that? What mm. honor killings are the most anti-evolutionary thing, right? You're killing your own offspring, but it's fundamental to culture, certain parts of India and Pakistan and Bangladesh. now understanding that requires understanding the socio political uh, you know underpinnings of that culture um and so many crimes like that in india whether it's domestic violence or whether it's uh, female violence towards women have that element so crime in india is very different in that regard now what has stood out in the vast sleuth of indian crime that we have covered um to me i would say and it's tough to pin this as a crime but it was the house of horrors in kolkata i don't know if you've heard about yeah, this yeah what burari no 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 oh, kolkata oh. not delhi oh in kolkata the og a... house of horrors there was another house of horrors yeah there was another house of horrors <laughs> kind of scary than one. burari if i am scary than burari yeah. scary than yeah yeah sense. yeah scary in the sense i'll just paint the opening scene for you to find out the full story check out the desi crime podcast <laughs> no but um there is this uh, it was a rainy or was a sunny man it was sunny <laughs> It's always sunny, man. So, <laughs> it's always sunny in Kolkata. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm for- forgetting the name of the area in Pak, uh, pa- no, Pakistan. Yo, Kolkata. that's crazy, bro. Uh, Kolkata is in India, uh, West Pakistan. Uh, I mean, uh, anyway, uh, no, um, no. So in Kolkata, posh area, um, 
And which year is it? Which year is it? Sorry. This is 2007 okay. or one of, somewhere in that. It's hmm. been a while since I've covered the episode. Um, and um, yeah, just a normal morning and Kolkata gets super bustling on a weekday. Uh, and suddenly the locals spot smoke coming from one of the houses. Now, if this was just any other neighborhood of Kolkata, it wouldn't have probably stood out. But since it was a well-to-do neighborhood, you know, you could say it was Bandra or GK of, uh, you know, the corresponding city. Uh, immediately the police was called. There's, a, there's fire somewhere from that house. So the police comes. The police station was, I think, two minutes away or something like that. And they go to the house where the smoke seems to be coming from. And they knock. There's no response. They knock again. There's no response. And suddenly when the cops sort of um, shush themselves, they hear a weird humming coming from behind the door. It's like a mix of many voices saying something at a, a muffle at a very low tone. Um, now that's that to begin with is very weird. Uh, they realize something is awry and they break open the door and the hum suddenly become clear and they are hymns actually. There are multiple speakers lying all across the floor like cassette players of sorts playing religious chants. Um, of uh, a specific guru. Now, the police doesn't have time to figure this out. They have a fire to deal with. So they try to pinpoint the source of the fire and they find it in the bathroom of that house. And yeah, they, the, the, the fire was actually coming from a corpse, a burnt corpse. Somebody had mm -hmm. immolated themselves. And um, this was clearly uh, recent, uh, a few hours ago or a few minutes ago. And there was a note beside it which said, love you, beta. So, sort of the police pieced it together in that moment, which is this father seems to have committed suicide and that's the suicide note he has left. The police figure if he said, love you, beta, there is a high chance there is somebody else in the house, um, the, the, the beta, uh, the kid. And then they see another room, which is locked and there is cloth stuffed under the, the, the sill of ooh, the door. Ooh. So like, when you do, we do this in middle class households all the time where, you know, to prevent mosquitoes from coming, yeah. we stuff it with clothes. And so that's what it was. But in daytime, so obviously we were, and the police push that door open and the darkest, dirtiest stench comes from that room. And the room is pitch black, not an iota of light coming through. The police switch on the lights and the room, despite the horrid smell, is meticulously laid out. Right, the bed sheets are folded, everything is in place, and somebody is sleeping, it seems. Oh, wow. The police go up to the bed, pull the bed sheet, and what they find is a skeleton with a bow tied across it, and the skeleton of two dogs perched upon the bed. In the room is also a tiffin box infested with maggots. The room has been sealed, it seems, for months. That's what the smell is, rotting flesh. And then they hear a banging sound coming from the living room. Oh my God, I thought it's over. And that's where the beta is. That's where Partho Day is banging his head on the wall, the son of the man that had just burned himself. And um, this kicked off one of the most horrifying cases in Kolkata. <laughs> Quite do a I, cliffhanger. Do I, do I fucking stay away, man? <laughs> do I fucking stay away? <laughs> so, so the kid was like perfectly alive, nothing. Perfectly alive, except he was banging his head. Banging his head, bro. I don't know how fine Baked, he was. Big, dirty, long nails. <laughs> he was hadn't perfectly baked alive. <laughs> yeah. But to Fuck, find how long was he in there? <laughs> how long was he in there, probably? Oh, in the house? Yeah. Like. Well, he had not left the house for months. That sounds scary than yeah. House of Barari, actually. Oh, that's it's much scarier, and um, yeah, and the investigation also when it unfurled um, revealed things that are very counterintuitive. Have you guys heard of the the Jolly case from Kerala? Oh yeah, yeah of course. I've covered it also. I've got oh, you so much it? shit yeah. for that episode, bro. Why? 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 So much shit. So because of an innocent little thing, and since you guys are, you know, no, from. So I don't know much about this case either. I just know she put cyanide and poison. Yeah, well, you know everything. Chef. Yeah. Master Chef. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, dude, I covered the case and the one mistake I made was pronounce a city the way it's spelled. And I Which called Kori Code. Cozy Code. <laughs> and 
I covered this case with so much diligence and effort, and that's the one thing that bro, stood out. Bro, if you stuck to the English name, you would have been fine. Calicut. Calicut, bro. I, I thought I was being fucking true to the case. Okay. Respectful and, to the case. Yeah, and it's Z H. How else you Z Z? How how can Z H be R? I don't yeah, get it. Have a PHB elephant, like huh? it's the same thing. Uh, no, but if you are making it an English version <laughs> yeah, of something, yeah. yeah. So but elephant is fine. The English <laughs> have come up with it. But so if he's you really are passionate about this, so no, because me. of the shit I got. <laughs> 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 so much so that I went to Kerala. Of course, I was doing something else. But I went to Kerala and I'm at the airport when I land and I ask. Well, well, Kochi, no, I was in. Uh, I think I was in. Co- I was in Korikod only. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was in Cal- Calicut. Calicut. Let's be safe now. Selfie. Yeah, selfie video. And I asked one of the staff, "I'm like, how do you pronounce it?" And then I posted it uh, on the next episode. That's also, true, we did. True. I apologized, but you know, I apologized out of peer pressure. No, but you, so you got like serious hate for this. No, my the community is nice. Okay, but well, I, was, I, was kind of but they, I was bullied. Like, <laughs> no, was, I feel like you did a lot of research, but then people are just concentrating on the fact that you. Sure, said yeah. Yeah. yeah, that happens yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Like humans, on humans. the Upar cinema case. Oh um, my god. <laughs> I did all of this research right and we go to Upar I read the whole <laughs> fucking book and um, the movie that was playing in the cinema was Border oh, no. the army movie right and the actor in the movie is Sunny Deol not Bobby Deol <laughs> <laughs> and in Ashwarya's impassionate intro <laughs> <laughs> one error I have to Bobby Deol and with the whole Lord Bobby fiasco it stood out to the people the comments are filled with that shit and it's <laughs> annoying when one detail really you know Sticks. Yeah, it's happened a bunch of times. Guys, off camera, Aryan was telling us that we should ask him anything and everything, whatever we want. So obviously, we have to ask him the important question. You want to ask him? What's important? What's your favorite question, bro? Messi or Ronaldo? No, bro. Ronaldo. And now Messi, though. I mean, I used to be Ronaldo for the longest time, but it's okay. Messi. No, you just say Ronaldo and you end the answer there. Okay, okay. What's okay. the important question? Sorry. What? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's your body count, bro? I've never had sex. <laughs> yeah, oh bro, you God. just like me. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, not one more person on this podcast. Break each other's virginity together. That's <laughs> Haram too, so I don't know. Why. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How do your parents feel about the podcast? Like not being you? a virgin. No, no. Fuck no, man. Oops. Uh, How do they feel? Or like your family? I mean, anybody? Yeah, they're dead, so. Oh my what? god! I don't know. True pair. How do they feel about? How do they? How do your pair? I've never asked you. I wow. think. Damn. Okay. Wow. We, we're such great interviewers, bro. Yeah, this They've is, this is good. good. This is good. Yeah, this is yeah, you. Yeah, so. Um, my parents. I think it was a little bit different to them that I decided to not go to law school and pursue this full time. So I think. Wait, it, quick. Uh, yeah. what, what were you guys studying in undergrad? <laughs> Political That's science and book. philosophy, okay. about to go to law school. Okay. Biology and philosophy, about to become an astrobiologist. Astrobiologist? Yeah, bro. What the hell that is? That yeah. sounds crazy. He's an astrologer, basically. Yeah. Astrologer. Yeah. Astrologer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, the power. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, so I think that was a little bit new to them, and it took them some time to understand how much money can be made from this, whether or not I'd be fine, hey, hey, hey. like. That's that your passion. That is your passion. It's Come on, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, take you that money first. <laughs> right, but um, I think now once they've seen the success that's come with it, how well it's doing, the way it's appreciated from people, yeah. how much we enjoy doing it, uh, how much it is our passion. Yeah. Also, I think passion is too overrated. So you know, you know what that's I really true. like about them. The fact that when you ask them why they started, they're like, there's they're just so a blunt. gap in the fucking yeah. market, guys. We they're started it. That is so yeah, yeah, weird. Like, we're, we're like, because no, most no people BS, are like, it's no passion. No, no, but it's childhood a, dream. It's no, no, no. We talk about <laughs> this often podcast. that we could have created a passion wherever. I tell my mom this, like, worst case podcast doesn't work out. I'll get a real estate license and I start doing that. Like, I don't care. It'll, it's all fun. I'll make it fun. Yeah. It's in your. It's and in I think the success content creators that are successful, whether knowingly or unknowingly, and I think sometimes. I think this one necessary condition for success is to treat content like product. Yeah. Um, I at least, you know, don't think of Desi Crime or Desi Studios or production houses anything different from a startup. And we, from the get go, Desi Crime has been a startup. It's not been a creative hobby, yeah. right? Um, and when you treat uh, content like that, uh, when you think of the consumer or the audience, right? These, I mean, these are just syn- synonyms at the end of the day. You can apply the same frameworks of business. Uh, to your creative uh, ventures and make them successful. It does not need to be 
happenstance or luck that makes you creatively successful. It can be to some degree uh, calibrated by your inputs. Um, how you think of the marketing, how you think of the quality, how you think of the consistency. Yeah. It's something that's we have, something that we've prioritized for the longest time. So, I mean, like I told you, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm not a crime consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I'm not passionate about it. I'm passionate Resolve, about storytelling yeah. right. that maps onto it. Um, yeah. It's more skill based than passion based. And I think there's this notion in our field that what's creative comes only instinctively and there's no way to sort of build on it. There's no way to develop a creative skill. I think that ties into the whole treating it like a business. We realized it, sure, it was a creative skill, but that's a skill that needs to be developed. It's a skill that needs to be honed. The more practice we put in, the better it gets like anything yeah. else in the world. It's not that I have a writer's block, I can't write anymore type of deal. Um, and that we can make our creative skill better over yeah. time. So, what yeah. if, if you had like if you had the choice, what other types of content would you make? Like uh, something with content, um, probably like a sort of motivational kind of life skill, life hack sort of thing. Uh, for me, maybe. but that would also be a podcast format, or would it be no, like a no, blog? No, no, probably or would it be, be like just like me. Oh, just you again. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I, I'd probably make like, I don't know, health, wellness or history, something of that kind. I found, um, so for the longest time I wanted to make, funny, also, uh, Desi Crime is not the first creative thing we did, you know, and back in college I remember shooting, uh, I ate only broccoli and chicken for 30 days yeah. and making that <laughs> yeah, more that. beast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so all kinds of those, you know, uh, we, we played around with things during COVID, I flew back from US, India to US. One of the first people to fly back and because I was a student, I was allowed to. And so I vlogged that whole thing and I made it. And we were all like, we trying things all the time. And then, you Same know, what's the yeah, so exactly. So it's, it, it, Desi Crime wasn't the first. That's just what people know. Um, yeah. One thing I've wanted to do since was I, I'm obsessed with etymology, like tracing the roots of words. Tell, like, tell you, tell you the First history word, of mankind. Cozy cord. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I were, well, ZH is not the way you spell that. Okay, if you get in the etymology. No, but uh, I think words like small examples, like the word where, where does the word villain come from? Right. It'll tell you the history of uh, not just comic, uh, comic book culture, but it'll tell you something about Greece. The word villain comes from villani, who were the caretakers of Greek villas back in the day, right? And they used to be, these were the peasant class that took care of the villas of the really rich Greeks. Um, and they were called the Villanis. Now, the feudal system was removed from right. uh, Greece, but and this is like thousands of years ago. But the words still sustain and words usually adapt to whatever situation is there in the polity at the moment. And so then Villani was co-opted for people that are frowned upon, you know. Oh, wow. So Villani became that. Then in, I think, the 18th century, 19th century, in a book, I think, uh, the writer used Villani, uh, its form villain, for a negative character. And since it became, this was a, a snowball effect of where, how we have the word villain today. Now, I find that absolutely fascinating. And I think, um, you know, I wanted to make a podcast about this or write a blog about this, um, about a word a day and the history of it. And this fucking guy, uh, Adam, Adam something, he is this Harvard linguist who yeah. he had a he had this page which was at 2000 followers because he, he made posts about etymology. This dude is a genius. He had 2000 to... followers and I kept telling Ashwara, Ashwara, I have this amazing idea and oh my god, <laughs> if I can make reels about this, I know it will blow up and this and that. And I never did it because I have thousands of ideas and I'm very lazy. Um, and uh, you guys need to put his name, etymology nerd or something. He's so good. Mm -hmm. And this guy started so making real. reels and TikToks. <laughs> He's a million followers. He is he is so oh, famous. Wow. So I saw a gap in the market. Like I knew it would do well. And I mean, he did what Fill I thought he should do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fill the gap. Yeah. 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 Fill the gap. Damn, I learned something new. Milani. Mm. Nice. <laughs> I can hear you talk forever, man. Mm. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So we should get coffee after this. Coffee <laughs> <laughs> from this place. Where, yeah, where he just keeps talking. I'm just like, yeah, go on. <laughs> so what would, no, no, actually, what would you guys, so you uh, you started off as vloggers or comedians or sketch, like comedy sketches. How did that start off? So I started off, I used to love recording like videos. Okay. Of, like my friends are having fun, my family is having fun. But I didn't do that thinking that I'd one day upload to the internet and a lot of people would watch it. Oh, okay. It was just like, oh, I'll watch it five, five, ten years later and it'll be such a nice memory to have. Mm. 
and I used to get a lot of shit because I used to record everything. Like, you know, something fucked yeah. up is happening, I'll record. Like, I used to love... Because, like, five years, six years later, it almost looks like vintage footage mm. of, like, you know, mm-hmm. one day, September 27th, 2002 or something. Mm. And so, one year after 9-11. <laughs> Stay up, Philip is happily married. <laughs> In Texas. In Texas, yeah. Um, and then, uh, I used to be very close to my grandmom. I started making videos with her. Like, again, like, fucking around and making videos mm. with her. And that kind of blew up on the internet because people mm. loved watching it. Um, like, we used to react to, like, shows. And then Netflix reached out saying, hey, do you guys want to come to that Bombay and react dope. to shows? Mm. And, uh, yeah, we reacted to, like, a bunch of shows. Like, we, it was just me and my grandma with, like, my phone camera. And then suddenly it was, like, 40 people on set. And my grandma was like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, so that's how I started. And then, uh, then she died, which is sad. Uh, <laughs> I didn't like that. <laughs> like, I, I, just I just want to see your face. I just want to see your face. Yeah, so that happened. And I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay, man. You can't leave, man. <laughs> And uh, that's when I started vlogging. Vlogging as in I used to make short videos. I used mm-hmm. to like do, I love doing challenges with my friends and family. <laughs> and then that's how I started vlogging. And like I have like 486 episodes now. Uh, I upload like, yeah, I upload like three episodes a week. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. It's, vlogs are like four to five minutes long. Okay. But it's yeah, a lot we, of fun. We work really hard to make sure as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just my, I'm usually behind the camera, it's just my friends and family. <laughs> they're, they, they are, yeah. Yeah. They are, yeah. They have a lot of work to do. Unpaid so, yeah. labor is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, I don't make any sort of content online. This is the only thing I do. I'm actually in med school right now. Final oh, year. Sure. Just give my final year exam. So if I pass, I'll be a doctor. Oh, good dude, Sneha Philip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when she died, you were born and you are Sneha. This is actually getting creepy now. The more you talk, crazy. this is getting creepy. Reincarnation. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm lingerie right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> Yo, uh, what, uh, what kind of doctor do you want to become? I have a few in mind. Like, um, I had my electives in cardiology, which I found interesting. Okay. I really like learning neurology. Not necessarily maybe the practical aspect of it, I'm just like finding my feet there. Okay. But yeah, a few things in mind, I'll probably know more when I do my internship. Because I'll do a one year house surgency, mm-hmm. where I'm posted in different departments. And, and that's you study when I'm in actually India. a doctor. Yeah, study back home in Kochi. Wow, bro. It's awesome. How do you make the time for like uh, content? Last year's been hectic because it was final year. But yeah. apart from that, I used to, it was not bad managing both. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, has a, he has a proper fan base. <laughs> like people love him. Like no, on, the on the podcast, on the, yeah. on the, on the, work, podcast, yeah. on the vlog, anywhere. So like, yeah. so if he is having exams or like if he's really working hard, it's my job to make it look like I hang out with him every day. <laughs> so <laughs> if he comes out for five minutes, <laughs> I am recording every, every single second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because then he goes back into his, you know. And sometimes when I'm not there for a month, I'll see clips of me fighting with another friend from 2021. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know, people, I need to give people what they want, so. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know if I would want a content creator performing surgery on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna vlog it, bro. I'm vlog it. <laughs> Hi guys. Casey <Basic> cry! <laughs> That's uh, very cool though. Man. Nice. What about you guys? How long have you been friends since school? High yeah, school, yeah. Uh, ninth grade? Ninth grade. Yeah. It's been a long time. So you both studied in Delhi? Too long. In Noida, yeah. Hmm. And then went to the same college in the US. Yeah. Have you guys co- covered the Arushit Alwa case? We have, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's on YouTube as well. What, what do you, who do you think did it? I don't think the parents did it. I don't think the parents did it. You don't think the parents did it? Not at all. Then who? Hemant. No, but Hemant died. <laughs> oh, him with her, him with her, him with her. Sorry, I love how his brain is like telling himself. <laughs> oh yeah, him with her. Osama, no wait, Osama was actually in Pakistan. Right? He was also there, like, having a rich inner internal conversation. Uh, yeah, no, so, so, him with her. So, him with her. No, no, the the other house help. Him with her wasn't. He wasn't one of the killers. The, the other house help as in those four five people. Theory, yeah, the, the other house helps who are friends with Hamraj that entered yeah, the house. Yeah, Hamraj died. Sorry, man. What is? <laughs> He's confused. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but yeah, the other ones. Yeah. But then why were they never caught? Then like, what was the? 
Yeah, because every time somebody no, commits a murder, they are caught, and everything on the internet. Because there's no, politics. There's <laughs> politics in in the CBI in India. There's politics in the policing yeah. system. The first investigation was completely really botched, botched by the Noida police. So when the CBI did come in, there was barely no evidence. Imagine there. having so much blood spillage and not being able to properly pe pe peg it to a person. Before because the police even arrived, the crime scene had been like cleaned up because family were there. They were touching her, taking her pulse. Like completely destroyed crime scene. Yeah. And then the politics of the CBI. But you're convinced it was those four people who. Not like a hundred. Not hundred percent. Not enough to I think convict them. And I don't think anybody could be convicted. You need to be guilty without a doubt. But if I were to, you know, if if I was at gunpoint and I had to pick one, I'd yeah. pick. Uh, you pick the four workers. Yeah. Yeah. Pick them. That's them. Yeah. <laughs> Call me classes. <laughs> think it's them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't. You disagree. I mean, no. I've I've also read it like. Watch a lot of shows and but I can't figure out. Yeah, I yeah. just don't like. I feel like, I mean, class is a thing, right? So if anybody was to get away with it, it would be the parents. But mm. so I find it very hard to believe that those four guys could get away with it. Yeah. Like I would. Like it'd be I easier would, to pin it on them. Yeah, it would be easier for them to be framed for this. Yeah, dude. But you know, people the way the media portrayed it, they really overblew the class difference between the parents and like no, they were still they were not an Ambani by any. Like, they were not even millionaires. Like they no, weren't. No, it was just doctors living, middle class yeah. doctors living in Noida. And I, I mean, think future Fahim, dude. Like think of that. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I... why my kids? <laughs> <laughs> they were dentists, though. So I guess you're fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> stop. Doctors. Say doctors? Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Take it back. Man. I apologize. <laughs> okay, so what do you guys feel about um, your Wait, coverage? Wait, can you get closer to the mic? <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. <laughs> what do you guys feel about your coverage of a particular crime story mm. and what you see on like OTT, like a Netflix, mm. Hotstar, mm. Prime, whoever wants to sponsor us? Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we need to be mindful of that. <laughs> yeah, we said we need to be mindful of that. <laughs> so, A, all the platforms are great in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. and Love then, you all. I have all the subscriptions. Yeah. How do you cover it? How do we how do how we do interpret we feel it? about it? Um, I would say our audience is driven by uh, accurate reporting. When you make a show, the audience is driven by the dramatization. So we are lucky in that we can present all sides, and it's the accurate, honest, yet creative narr narration of the case that the audience is there for. Mm -hmm. um, whenever we've talked to you know. I mean, we're, we actively work with OTT to make these shows and we're working on a couple ourselves. And the first thing we are told is, you know, keep that in mind. The dramatization, the the cliffhanger, the way the story unfolds needs to be, the closure also needs to be kept in mind because the audience will not be there for a visual medium, you know, because they want masala. Now, of course, masala is, has a negative connotation. You need to be aware you can make masala and accuracy, which many shows have... I think very well done. Uh, not because I want them to sponsor us, but not platforms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <why not? laughs> no, no. no. Uh, but uh, I think we're lucky in that. Where True Crime Podcast, the audience comes for knowing the details. They want to know the theories. Um, so I think you know we save ourselves in that regard. Do your fans send you messages saying, "Hey, buddy, cover this one," or like, "Yeah, yeah, all, yeah, the, time. all the time." Yeah. yeah. We have like Are, catalog of things that they recommend. Out of cases? No. Then we'll commit them. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Our, 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 works again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll just clip what she said. We will commit a crime. <laughs> our DM. Look at the camera, say that. <laughs> Bro, you, how many of our DMs to us get hidden oh. because they have kill and murder oh, and shit. rape and God knows what all written no, in no, it? No, no, they don't hate us. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a catalog, our DMs. So now we have a running list of cases that we have to cover. What do you guys, um, I'm sure you've heard about this. For example, when the Ted Bundy series went really viral, mm. yeah. there was the whole backlash about how these shows yeah. um, kind of glamorize yeah, yeah, yeah. these serial killers. And there was there was huge backlash against that. I think more than glamorize these serial killers, the bigger problem with true crime, and I, I joke about it because that's how I make peace with it to some degree, is at the end of the day, we are getting clicks and money because of somebody's death, right? right? That's the bigger problem of true crime ethics. Now, how do you make peace with it? I have my own philosophical reasons, much of which could be ad hoc rationalizations because I, this is my job. You can get but, into it. Uh, I think uh, uh, when it comes to the glamorization, I am. Uh, I don't buy that argument at all. I think uh, there, 
a Ted Bundy exists mm -hmm. and a Ted Bundy was deified by many women and they were attracted to him. Telling that story right. is not glamorizing him. It's what happened. It is portraying what happened. Now, if the portrayal of truth is uncomfortable, that's the fucking job of the artist. The job of the artist is to make you uncomfortable. Which is my argument for movies like Animal and whatnot, where yeah. I, I didn't, I have not even watched it. I couldn't yeah, get past same. 20 minutes. <laughs> it's so, it's written so poorly in my opinion. I disagree. I, yeah. I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, but <laughs> the, the argument that it glamorizes this and that, even Kabir Singh, which I really, really liked. It was shot so, it was made so well in my opinion. Um, it's portraying something that's real, which is the job of the artist, the job of the artist to make you uncomfortable, sit with the discomfort, push the edge, push the envelope, and I love that. So if a series glamorizes Ted Bundy, which is not what it did, it showed how people glamorize Ted Bundy. I haven't watched it, to be honest. You know, um, with, with the Dharma and all. So that's my argument yeah. against the glamour angle. With the making money, which is, I think, a better argument against what we do. Um, and I shouldn't have brought it up because my defense is probably not the strongest. Um, <laughs> I have I'm, money. We'll get the lawyer next. <laughs> but I think um, true crime is one genre where the uh, tragedy is linked to a, a person. And what you said a few minutes ago, where, uh, you know, thousand is a statistic, one is a story. Um, most stories about human nature, most dramas have deaths somewhere in the other yeah. that are uh, involved. In true crime, it is Just a vast majority of the story. The but I think if you make a war movie, at the end of the day, you are somehow is, making yeah. money off of death, right? But if that's a lens. You, you can view it as making money off death. I view it as telling a story that needs to be told, for which the victim's mom reaches out to us saying, well done. And we happen to make money and be able to continue doing this. Honestly, that's all the validation you need. Yeah. When people yeah. who were associated with these crimes Absolutely. have come there. Yeah. How does a crime make the cut feel that expect? Um, <laughs> I think some very basic cuts, obviously there should be Indian, there should be enough like material available online to be able to build a comprehensive narrative. Uh, some stories are more conducive to becoming an interesting tale, an interesting podcast, others are not. The fact that you had a fight with your husband and then your husband killed you is not a story that can become a 30 yeah. minute long episode. So stories that have an interesting arc like the Kolkata murder case or the Sneha Philip case, those will definitely make the mm. cut. We try to cover cases that aren't super well known in the yeah. media, okay. which is which has been very, very key to to our podcast. There have been some like Arushi Talwar, which the audience has just really, really wanted. And so we've we made waited them. waited like three years yeah, to we're cover like, we're it. Not we didn't want to cover this. it. But then the, yeah, the comments about yeah. Arushi just wouldn't stop <laughs> coming in. So we made it. Uh, but for the most part, the episodes are cases that people wouldn't have heard or have been forgotten by our generation. They were like a very yeah. time. That, um, I think, other than that, it's mostly personal interest. Like I personally find unsolved cases very interesting. Yeah. They leave me at the edge of my seat and I enjoy that feeling. And I feel like there are more people like me out there who will enjoy like a disappearance. Just blue balls, case. man. Just, uh, uh, yes. Even you like the uns you hate the unsolved ones. Yeah, I hate them. But that's why you love them. <laughs> like, no, I, no, I like an ending, bro. I like the like yeah, yeah. You happy. don't like what Sneha Philip did to you, the fact that you're like still thinking no, about bro, it? No, bro, I don't. No, <laughs> like, I, first of all, I'm irritated with that fucking shop because they didn't have proper like security footage and they didn't know like yeah. that mm, lady, sure. who, who is yeah. she with. And even that house, the the, the building footage of yeah, yeah, the glare, yeah. that's lame. There's no yeah. glare. Something, something, <laughs> behind, something this, missing there. This shit will never happen to us because fucking Charles is there recording us. <laughs> we already have footage. I know where, I know where he was 4 p.m. yesterday. <laughs> no, but I'm also thinking about like the way she said like, you know, if a husband kills a wife, then that's not making it because that's so clear cut. Imagine like, you guys are so big one day that when people are going to commit crimes, they're like, how do we make it a basic crime? <laughs> like, this is too simple. I need to make it extravagant. That's, not the, that's scary. <laughs> like, let me buy a doll and like cut the head off or something. And keep it there. Something yeah. cryptic. Yeah, yeah something oh, cryptic. It doesn't man. make any sense. I just did it for the vibes. We get so many comments. It's weird. Where fans saying, I hope I, I I hope I'm murdered and I hope I'm murdered so I get covered on the basic crime. That is yes. so yes. fucked yes. up. Yes, so many, yes. And so yes. many people who ask us whether or not we're aware that we may be inspiring like the next killer. Both of those. Both of those. Different but very equally yeah. so. Are you no, I the feel like equally supply and demand. <laughs> <laughs> Free market capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> people that want to be killed. People that want to kill. <laughs> pen, pineapple, apple, pen, man. I mean. <laughs> No, we don't no. believe that. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? Yeah.
the PR yeah. is working is wrong there. Yes. He's like, shut up, Aryan. Yeah. What are you talking about? It's Aryan. Aryan. Oh, sorry, sorry. Next photo will be yours. Yeah, my mother. Fair enough. He's like, if you can call it Cozy Code, I can call it. Yeah. <laughs> He's from Calicut. I am from Calicut. Oh, yeah, shit. my dad's from Calicut. Say it. Can you just say Cozy Code? Bobby, they were saying they were nonsense, sort of sometimes. Dude, we've um, nurtured a very good community. But it's community. a very loving community. Very loving community. Usually, when the reels go viral, yeah. oh yeah. man, yeah. that yeah. brings yeah. in. Basic crime, nah, I'm in English. Me, you're talking about sort of comments. Oh, that's like, true. Shit, none of that. I, I don't understand. I translate that from English. <laughs> oh, your name's Basic Crime. Are you talking in English? Oh, okay. <laughs> because this, this because is the this, reason. Yeah. This is yeah. yeah. I, I speak English. I speak English and Malayalam. Exactly. Yeah, there exactly. we go. That's the. And reason. whatever three things you can speak in Hindi. Yeah. yeah, than that. Mera ungla ter ba. Talk about viral reels. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, it's mostly reels. It's also YouTube has opened up to a very, it's a, a wider audience. And so shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not, not shorts. Our videos have view? recently started doing really well, but okay. that attracts an audience very different. Um, yeah, right. And there, there was this one reel of ours that I think is at 32 or 33 mil. Which is directed towards a the call to action of that reel is go watch the full episode on YouTube. Oh, right? so, yeah. so it has attracted the real audience, which is a short attention span, tier one, tier two, tier three city. You know, they can watch the reel and they can understand it. But then that audience going to our YouTube video, which is 40 minutes of highfalutin English, <laughs> like really pisses them off. Um, and it makes like, them angry. Over they like, yeah, they're like, Banjo in Hindi mein bana ho ye. I want to know in Don't Hindi talk so much. Don't talk. Like, cut yeah. to the chase. Tell yeah. the cut story. to the chase. Tell. You both need to talk as much as you can. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, are you guys planning to do something in Hindi? Like, in the future? They're planning 10 million things, man. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, what, are your, uh, what are your future plans? Like, what are, what's, what's next for you? I guys? think lose virginity for the first. Uh, that's <laughs> fucking liars. Liar. I don't have liars on this podcast. <laughs> Two liars. I have already <laughs> have one liar. I will not take a second liar. <laughs> <laughs> if you have slept with Aryan here, please thing. comment down below. <laughs> 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 I need <mean>, one <laughs> fucking <laughs> comment. <laughs> I'm sure they refreshing the video <laughs> when it comes out. We're clipping this. This is our first clip which is going live. <laughs> okay. Um, so that, yeah, uh, yeah. what else are we planning to do? Just to comment on the Hindi thing, which is, we are not, I mean, I can talk about Hindi, I have a UP, I can do all of that. But um, I'm not a strong writer, our first language is right. Hindi. No, our first language is, our native language is Hindi, but our first but language is English. I the think. language you think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking, yeah. The, the, this Indian Express uh, columnist calls it, the Anglo-Indians have become the Indo-Anglicans. Mm. And mm. we're the Indo-Anglicans, right? This generation, this very... We're a, we're a very weird uh, sub-population in the world. There are not many populations in the world where your first language and native language differ. Um, and we are that, right? And so, but that's whether you know, good or bad, that's my strength. I can write well and talk well in English. So, I don't want to make Hindi content just because it'll get more clicks and it's massy. Numbers. Well, I, I wouldn't be proud of it, man. Like, every episode we make, we're proud of it. We're proud of what we've written. Um, if I make something I'm not proud of and it gets views, which I think most of the industry does, um, I, it wouldn't be creatively gratifying. What do you think about Hindi becoming <laughs> <laughs> the language, bro? Wow, do you really have really <laughs> Shut the fuck up, we did this one! What's the case? Yeah, wow, dude. <laughs> I um, think out loud. <laughs> yeah. um, it's funny. It's one of those things when you are. I. The preface here being, I think, privilege and all are uh, talked about too much, um, and it loses the essence of what privilege actually is. But this is one of those things where I am on the privilege side of it, um, and so I didn't necessarily understand. Um, this issue. Also because right when I passed out of high school, which I have done in North India, I went to US. So college is where these discussions really sort of enthrall your mind and you're discussing it, whichever yeah. side you're on of the spectrum. I didn't really participate in this discussion. So when I came back to India, I uh, tried to understand these issues more. 
I never felt innately that Hindi is the national language. A because I spoke in English all the time, so I didn't think of Hindi like that. Um, but the I'm I think North Indians of our demographic are out of touch with those that are imposing Hindi. So I don't know, you know, in my circle, I don't feel that Hindi imposition as such. Yeah. Um, but then when I talk to my friends in the south, right, um, we made the show called Bhoot Bastards and the director, Shaq, shout out Shaq, is uh, from Coimbatore. And I used to slip into Hindi sometimes, like, you know, just out of, just few phrases here and there. And he'd be like, I just know three <laughs> things, Tere Ben Gaz, <laughs> um, And so I think understanding that, but my thoughts on Hindi, dude, it's a, it's a the country of many religions, many cultures, many things. I, I, it makes no sense. It's just I've mm -hmm. not been at the receiving end of it. And so I don't really feel like it's pervasive, mm -hmm. but yeah. it, it it probably is when all my South friends from the South talk about it. Fair enough. What, what, what do you think? Like, I honestly want... What? Yeah, same opinion. Being from the South and being someone who knows absolutely zero Hindi, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Having an official language for Hindi, as Hindi, yeah. as stated in the constitution, makes sense. Mm -hmm. It is probably the most yeah. spoken language in India. Yeah. And having English as a secondary language for that purpose as well. But Imposing it as a national language doesn't make sense. Yeah. What's the argument of those pushing? Can't there be multiple national languages? I what is a national language? Yeah. Is it like symbolic? It's, it's, Firstly, yes, I don't think yeah, we have people you can make arguments too. So. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? No. Uh, no, you can talk to my mom rationally. <laughs> yeah, I will be talking to your mom about all the lies you speak. On huh? this <laughs> I am a virgin. Make like a compilation of the yeah. names. Why do we get lists, bro? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the comment section is just, it's me, it's me. It's <laughs> so, yeah. what, what is the kind of content you guys con consume? I mean, you consume Slime. 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 I mean, yes. And a lot of motivational content as well. Like, I really enjoy the sort of Tim Ferriss, Huberman mm. sort of. The kind of YouTube channel I'd want to have, I guess, the Ali Abdul's of the world, that hmm. sort of well, content. That guy is the goat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely incredible. How to so, do 2,500 things in yeah, 23 hours. <laughs> I mean, I used to watch him And still sleep for one hour. Yeah. Productive. Oh, it's right. right. The med school like motivation. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, you're a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck, perfect, yeah. But then I couldn't do that, bro. He's too, he's too organized and shit. Yeah. Just wing it. <laughs> Go for yeah. it. No, but I think for all of these motivational creators, obviously, I think we've discussed this enough in the industry that it's not an accurate representation of what anybody's like full day looks like. And Ali Abdul like talks about mm -hmm. this very proudly that, you know, when someone, an interviewer comes to me and says, can I like shadow you for a day to see really how productive you are in the day? He's like, no fucking way. Like I'm roaming around my pajamas like any other person. Yeah. You're not so, productive while you drink your fucking coffee. Yeah, you're <laughs> relaxing, bro. It's a normal Wake day. up and grind. Yeah, so... What, what about you? What do I what do I consume? A lot of uh, biohacking and health stuff. Okay. Um, to you know, how to uh, try to not be a virgin and you know like try to all this researching it. still it's hasn't helped you get still laid. Still, it hasn't. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Um, that but, but health biohacking and um, history. Fuck, dude. Uh, M check out if you if you any of you are into history. The Empire Pod. One of the best podcasts Incredible. about yeah. India with Anita Anand and William, uh, William Dalrymple, mm. which talk about empires from around the world. So I think uh, it's a lot of history and uh, biology related stuff. You know, I'm a wannabe Fahim. You know, I, I like no, biology. You're, you're an astrobio. You're yeah. would have been astrologist, astrobiologist. Astrologist. Wannabe. You <laughs> dropped out. Is that yeah. like like? Astrobiologist. He's go, he was going to say, is that even real? No, like, <laughs> I swear to God, he was going to say, is that, is that related even real? to life outside, like in the universe? No, so I, technically, but not like aliens, although that is one facet of it. Exist? Uh, do I think aliens exist? It's, a, it's rapid fire, bro. I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, no. Um, but could, I mean, it's not yeah. that big. Uh, but what is astrobiology is one facet of it that really I, I gravitated towards was understanding how um, you know self replicating molecules came to be so how did an rna and mm -hmm. dna come to be like you know that's the first fun, most fundamental thing about life living things is that they can self replicate the which, first cell how the, the components of it came yeah, out yeah the, the first cell and therefore the dna how did mm -hmm. a self replicating molecule come to be and one of the leading theories is that the you know the basic like the nucleotides adenine guanine all of these 
composite particles came on a meteorite that while on pressure with the oceans back then the heat and the conditions led to the molecules being created at at that point uh, or at least rna yeah. which then Became joined to become dna yeah. wow. i believe you're a virgin i believe yeah. you're a virgin i <laughs> 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 i believe it i believe it buddy <laughs> i told you man i told you yes uh, guys nobody comment out below <laughs> there are no comments <laughs> that's as pro like you can be like hard enough you know ye bolta rahega okay guys i think we should wrap up did yeah, you guys have fun episode, yeah yes what did you guys have fun <laughs> 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 no, no. <laughs> <laughs> dude this was great man yeah i had a great yeah. time yeah, awesome. yeah thank this you this is so totally much. not a podcast this yeah no, <laughs> i had a great time thank you Yeah. What else would they expect you to say, right? Like yeah. <laughs> they would say, "Where can they find you guys? <laughs> what else should they check out?" Yeah, check out our check out our audio podcasts on Spotify and these audio servers. Although now we're trying to make it big on YouTube, um, like them, and so you can find us on Desi Studios uh, on YouTube, where we make several shows, and Instagram at Desi Crime. Yeah. Um, yeah. And let me know in the comments if you'll have sex with me. Please <laughs> <laughs> narrate. I mean, go on and tell me. Yeah, yeah. You were serving yeah. everything. Imagine a young, sexy, more like fuck the words. Oh, too many, guys on, like, the <laughs> Oof, too many oh. guys on this panel. Yeah, I mean, you get more of it. That's how I feel every single time. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please catch us on the next one and uh, commit crimes because you know they need content. D- don't do that. <laughs> 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 But, yeah. Cheers.